Our next Tech for Techies videos will be covering the CTOP Manager together with the UPS 1600, looking at the configuration options, but specifically the base unit. Let's take a look. The base unit parameters for the UPS 1600 list the nine parameters necessary in order to configure your UPS for your application. Now let's start from the top and describe them going downwards and we can discuss some of the engineering points that you have to consider while uh, programming your UPS. The connection threshold here at 22.5 volts represents the minimum voltage allowed by the UPS 1600 in your network. Any voltage variations above 22.5 volts will not be buffered. The moment that the voltage drops below 22.5 volts, a buffer event will be signaled and the UPS will switch to buffering mode of the uh, UPS device. Let's look to the buffering time. Now the customer has two options. Either they can specify a buffering time, a maximum buffering time in seconds, or they can simply select the maximum buffering time which the energy cells can provide. This describes two very different applications. The maximum buffering time option refers to customers who don't have a shutdown procedure in place. They're looking to maintain operation as long as they can. For the other option, which is uh, limiting the buffering time, this is for customers that have a shutdown procedure in place. Now, these customers uh, are looking to bring their system into a known state. And if for some reason the shutdown procedure isn't successful, and by virtue of the power failure itself, then it's important there's only one option left, which is simply powering down the system. This has the secondary benefit, of course, is of unnecessarily depleting the batteries. Such applications is important to restart the system with a charged battery, but if the system has been maximum depleted, then we have to wait for the 85% charge of the batteries before the system is, in most cases, considered uh, viable. Uh, limiting the buffering time is actually very common for most people to set. Now, 10 minutes here is a uh, recommended example, but this is something that you can scale. So the next uh, parameter is the additional buffer time after PC shutdown. I'm going to pull up the diagram we use in the shutdown service. You'll uh, see in another video of how a shutdown is documented in the CTOP manager. What we see here is the additional buffer time after PC shutdown is on the right hand side and it refers to the time after the PC shutdown command has been given and the PC ping test, the method in which we communicate with the PC, um, has been successfully ended and the amount of time we wait before we shut off the output on the UPS. Now for slower, for older PCs, as the PC begins to shut down and it shuts down the USB port, that'll cease communication with our UPS and it signify that the PC has been shut down. But there's still a, a non-zero amount of time between the USB being shut down and the PC actually being ready for the power to be pulled. The expected buffer current is an optional parameter to help you with the engineering of your system. Now in this case, we have a threshold at 22.5 and a buffering time of 600 second set. Now this is a 10 ampere USB device and I know that with a 1.2 ampere hour it will never be able to buffer 10 amps at 600 seconds. That's just simply too much. But if we enter that value in, what it'll do is give us a feedback on the device itself showing that the battery is insufficient in order to buffer this amount. So if we go to buffering, insufficient charge level, the charge level is too low in order to provide this uh, buffering ability. So this gives you a quick feedback on your system if you've set up systems that you know that cannot be supported with the energy. A more realistic buffering, let's say a one and a half amp hour limit. So if we switch over to the base unit, we see that this alarm has been cleared as it is possible to buffer one and a half amps for 600 seconds. The reset time, wrong. Reset after buffering option is important for customers with uh, PC applications. And this is because if we look towards the shutdown structure, once the PC has been issued a shutdown command, the only way to turn a PC back on is by, is by cycling the output of the UPS. And that's because PCs only respond to a flanking edge at their input. To enable this, this cycling, we have to enable the reset after buffering option for the UPS 1600. We also have additionally the, the ability to set the reset time necessary for uh, the flanking output. So looking at the last two options we have under signaling, uh, we have uh, the downtime alarm 
and the wait time for stable input voltage. Again, going back to our shutdown diagram, this is uh, very nicely displayed. The downtime alarm represents the time between the, power, the actual power failure and the buffering alarm setting on the UPS. Now we set it as a default at 100 milliseconds. This reflects our buffering device. We also separate a uh, cell separately as a device, and this covers 80% uh, of the typical fluctuations we see in a DC network. Um, the wait for stable time, uh, stable input voltage refers to this peak here, where anything below, as the default value is one second, um, will be not considered as a stable input voltage in order to switch it back from buffering into the mains voltage. And with that, with those nine parameters, we have the engineering of the UPS necessary. Siemens, ingenuity for life.